So here's another fun example of how to draw a complex island. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work out what will be the charge on the crane. Well, first of all, what's the ligand? The ligand is going to be... NH3. NH3, isn't it? So that's just ammonia. So that's my ligand there. Like so. Okay. It's a neutral ligand, so what is the charge on chromium? What is the chromium ion's charge? Chromium is going to be CR3+. Plus. Yes, because that's a neutral ligand, so overall um, it's going to be... Sorry. What will be my coordination number? Six. Brilliant. I have got six monodentate ligands. Yeah. Therefore, what will be the shape? Octahedral. Octahedral, yeah. So let's draw him. Chromium in the middle. Then I'm going to put, remember we're going to do lines NH3. Make sure that the bond, this is my dative bond here, coordinate bond, it starts from the lone pair on the nitrogen. Because it's that lone pair which is forming it. We have one coming up from behind as well. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. So we have my wedge, like so, with your little arrow on to show it's a coordinate bond, and then your dash. I would kind of like draw these and then add your arrows on. NH3 with your lone pairs, like so. And then you put the whole thing in square brackets and put the charge, like so. So my bond angles are going to be 90 degrees. Okay. Okay, so this is a more exciting example. Okay, why is it more exciting? Okay, it's EN. You may be thinking, oh, what is EN? Never heard of it before. So sometimes they draw the ligand out for you. That is EN. That is neutral, isn't he? He's just a diamine. So he's a neutral molecule. Okay, where is he going to donate? Where are his lone pairs? Yeah, on the two end. So what type of ligand is he? Bidentate ligand. You've got to be able to, they are going to give you ligands probably you've not seen before. So you've got to be able to look at that ligand and think, okay, is he going to be a monodentate, a bidentate, a tridentate, what type of ligand is he going to be? Okay, right, how many coordinate bonds is he, oh okay, first of all, let's do the, the nickel, what is going to be the charge on nickel? Three plus. Three plus. Yeah. Do you have to put the charge on the iron when you draw it to do that? Not, no, as long as you put it, you need to put it out on yeah. yeah. Uh, charge on nickel equals plus three. Uh, and you need to be able to work out what it's plus three. Okay, so, uh, how many coordinate bonds, what's going to be Six. my coordination number? Coordination number is going to equal six. So how do you know that? I know that because I've got three of these. Yeah. Each of them can form two oh, bonds, right. so I've got six in total. Okay. Now we need to draw him. Okay, so going to be what's going to be my shape? Octahedral. Uh, Octahedral. Let's put it down. Octahedral, just so that you're happy. Okay, so nickel in the middle. Okay, now. Like Let's go for it. What we do is we draw this two ways. So here we go. This is the um, uh, more complicated way. What I would do is I would just put in your bonds. Before you put any ligands in, just put in your bonds like so. I say, so I've not done any, any ligands so man. All I've done is put my bonds and put my arrows on. Then that will help. Then, 
Once you've done this bit, then you can put in your ligands. So you're always going to put on, these are going to be nitrogens, aren't they? And each of these are going to be nitrogens, like so. Yeah, let's do that. So I've got my notepad. Then you can draw them up. I would probably go for, if you can, using skeletal formulae for the carbon oh chain. God. But it's quite easy. Does that connect well? Yes. Because all you've got to do can you not do skeletal formulae with this connect two of them up. Oh. Like so. <laughs> and then put your H's on. Well, you are on your, oh, you, you will yeah, on your yeah, nitrogen. Yeah. You don't put H's on your carbons in the skeletal, oh, but yeah. you would on your on your, on your, on your nitrogen. Yeah, yeah. That's probably the easiest. Otherwise, if you start doing this as CH two, it gets really messy. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Well, ugly. And then it's not that ugly. Square brackets three plus. Oh like so. my lord. So that's. The, probably the hard way to. Sometimes, however, they let you show your ligand. They'll say you can show the end like H2N and then just uh, yeah. like oh. so. So you can do that. Basically, it's going to look the same, but you just put a curved line. Yeah. That's quite useful if it's a really complicated carbon backbone. You can just put a curvy line between them. It's cool. So, yeah. And a bond angle. Oh, you used to it. I was Okay. Okay, so, slightly different, but let's go for it. First of all, what ligands have I got? Let's just try and identify my ligands. I've got him, he is NH3, ammonia. What else do I have? Him, Cl minus, like so. So those are my two ligands. Right, the overall thing doesn't have a charge. So what is the charge on platinum? Ah, yeah, plus two. Because each chloride is minus, I've got two of them. So platinum must be plus two. How many coordination? What is my coordination number? Yeah, brilliant. Coordination number is four because both of these are monodentate ligands. Okay, now we have to. I'm going to tell you he is square planar. Okay. You may be using multiple words there. Just it's going to be a square How plane. do we know in the exam? You, well, this guy is one you have to learn, or I'll come back to it in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, so platinum in the middle, and then it's a bit like octahedral, but you just leave out the two things. So, um, again, I would do your bonds first, like so. Um, put your arrows on. And then put your ligands on. Oh, yeah. Did we draw the other new way? Uh, yeah, if you want to. Well, uh, from above. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Which we'll come on to later. There are actually two isomers for this. Oh, God. We're only going to draw one. And then I'm just going to put square brackets around it to show that it is a complex. Uh, bond angles going to be 90 degrees. And I have drawn in square. Um. So this is a slightly more complicated example. So I told you what EN is again. What are my ligands? I've got EN, which I've told you. CL what is that? Minus 
That is going to be a polydentate ligand. So they told you that P is bidentate. And I have also got C minus, who is monodentate. So what is my coordination number? Six. Yeah, because I've got two bidentate ligands and two monodentate ligands. Uh, most of the six. We did a four minute yeah. test, and we did a little one. Um, now, uh, what's going to be my charge on cobalt? Plus so plus oxidation. Plus three plus. Three plus. Three plus. Yes, he's going to be plus three. He's got the whole thing has got a plus charge. Chloride is minus, and I've got two of them. So cobalt must be plus three. Right, so let's draw it, and again, there are two ways of drawing this, which we'll come back to, but we'll just do one way for the time being. So again, octahedral, I would put, put my bonds in first, because if you start drawing ligands, it gets a little bit complicated. Put your arrows on, I've done that twice. And then if you want to, just to remind yourself, Put your low pairs on. Okay, um, and then I would put in some atoms. I'm just going to draw it this way. I'm going to put my two nitrogens there. And I would put my two chlorides there. And then I put the whole thing in square brackets give it a plus charge and my bond angles are going to be 90. Yeah. Bond angles 90. Oh. Do you understand Steph? Why does the oxidation number matter? Uh, because they will ask you for it probably. Okay. Yeah. Um, I kind of 